Hello pilgrims and thanks for your great response to my recent video on the major Caminos of Western Europe. You asked for more information about Italian Caminos. So in this video, I want to give you an overview of the top Caminos of Italy. And by the end, I hope you'll understand why Giuseppe Verdi said, you can have the rest of the universe if I can have Italy. About five years ago, a friend of mine who I had walked with in Spain said, why don't we trade St. James for St. Francis? I don't think he'll mind. Then the next summer I found myself walking from Assisi to Rome with a group of friends. It was a fabulous experience and I was instantly hooked on Italian pilgrimage walking. And here's what I found. First, Italian pilgrimage trails are quieter than those in Spain. You're not competing for a bed every night, and the locals are surprised and delighted to see you and welcome you into their country. Second, Italian food is outstanding. Every town has a specialty. Every region is famous for its unique contribution to Italian cuisine. Third, the scenery is surprising. If you're walking in much of northern or central Italy, you may very well find yourself in vast forests or on sweeping agricultural plains. Plus, Italy has 7,600 kilometers of coastline. And in southern Italy, the spectacular mountains and cliffs go right down to the deep blue waters of the Mediterranean. It's a dramatic topography that makes walking more challenging but makes the rewards more enchanting. Now, before we start, let's get some vocabulary out of the way. In Spain, a pilgrimage is called a Camino, like the Camino de Santiago. In Italy, a long pilgrimage walk is often called a Camino, like the Camino of San Benedetto. In Spain, two or more Caminos are called, well, Caminos. In Italy, two or more Caminos are called Camini. So with that, let's take a look at the top Italian Camini. With hundreds of saints over 2,000 years of Christian history, Italy has many holy places and many Camini that aim pilgrims at these sites. I'm going to divide Italian Camini into three groupings sponsored, thematic, and connector. A sponsored Camino has some advantages because it has governmental backing, it has backing from tourist information centers, and it also has the backing of economic development agencies. This really helps when it comes to things like signage, accommodation, and trail maintenance. A great example of a sponsored Camino is the Via Francigena. The Via Francigena crosses into Italy at the Great St. Bernard Pass on its way to Rome, following the itinerary of Archbishop Sidric of Canterbury from 990 AD. The route has been a European cultural itinerary since 1994 and is supported by seven Italian regions over the 1,000 kilometers in Italy. The topography includes subalpine mountains, the low Piedmont foothills, the vast and flat Po Valley, the forested Apennines, the rolling hills of Tuscany, and the volcanic ridges and valleys of Lazio. There are important historical sites like Lucca and Siena, as well as Rome itself. Pilgrim accommodation is available on most every stage, and signage is excellent. In my opinion, the scenery, food, historic sites, and accommodation infrastructure provide an unrivaled pilgrimage experience. Officially recognized by the regions of Umbria, Tuscany, and Lazio, the Via di Francesco links important sites of St. Francis, beginning in Florence through Assisi and Rome. Sites include Florence, the Casentine Forest, Mountaintop Santuario de la Verna, Charming Gubbio, Assisi, which is second only to Rome in pilgrim visits in Italy, Spoleto, home to one of the few surviving letters of St. Francis, 
the tallest human-made waterfall in the world, and of course, the eternal city of Rome. The mountains make for a challenging walk, but the green forests and the living legends of St. Francis make this a deeply spiritual pilgrimage trail. Sponsored by the region of Emilia-Romagna, the Via degli Dei, Way of the Gods, begins in Bologna and crosses the Apennines to Florence. After Bologna, mountain scenery gives the popular one-week route drama and grandeur before it ends in Florence. One pilgrim wrote, The sensations of serenity and sounds of the woods make us hear the voices of nature in our heads. We returned home carefree. The 180-kilometer route of the Magna Via Francigena, sponsored by the region of Sicily, crosses the Sicilian island from Palermo to Agrigento. Sicily's long and diverse history offers pilgrims windows into its many influences, including Byzantine, Norman, and Greek. According to my friend Rosa Torres Tomasos, along the way are rich farmlands, quaint agrarian villages, some perched on very steep hills. The local townspeople are a great resource and are very welcoming. The regions of Lazio and Puglia sponsored the Via Francigena del Sud from Rome to Santa Maria di Leuca. The route follows part of the Roman Appian Way to the seaport of Brindisi, where medieval pilgrims set sail for the Holy Land, then continues to the tip of the heel of Italy. Being young, it is not yet perfect, and for this reason, walking there is also more adventurous and more challenging. But everything you see and experience is more virgin and genuine. The people are warm and welcoming and treat you as one of the family, says my friend Beatrice Morici. One thematic pilgrimage is the Camino di San Antonio from Padova to Laverna. St. Anthony of Padova is one of Catholicism's most beloved saints, and this walk connects his tomb in Padova to a site beloved by St. Francis of Assisi, Santuario de la Verna, and then to the Via di Francesco. In place for only 10 years, it's still in its developmental stages and is oriented to Catholic and Franciscan pilgrims. Another thematic pilgrimage is the Camino de San Benedetto from Norcia to Monte Cassino. The itinerary links places important to St. Benedict, the founder of the Benedictine Order, who was born in Norcia, established a monastery at the Holy Cave of Subiaco, and then was headquartered at the famous monastery in Monte Cassino. My friend Aaron Zavalia says, It is a beautiful pilgrimage that is well run by the volunteers. It takes you through some lovely scenery and religious places that you otherwise might not ever see. There are breathtaking views, quaint little hillside towns, great food, and wonderful people. One connector route is the Via Romea Germanica, which starts at the Brenner Pass over the Alps and connects to the Via Francigena near Montefiascone on its way to Rome. The route traces the diary of Abbot Alberto of Stade, who traveled in 1236 to Rome. Still in its developmental stages, it crosses through the cities of Ravenna, Forli, Arezzo, and Orvieto before joining the Francigena. This is an extremely interesting walk, traversing widely varying landscapes and passing by many interesting towns. You will get an in-depth experience of northern and central Italy, according to Pilgrim Paul. Though based on an ancient Roman road, the Via Postumia has only been reopened since 2013 and connects the east and west sides of the Italian peninsula on the way to Santiago de Compostela in Spain. The route crosses nine UNESCO World Heritage Sites, including Mantua, Cremona, Vicenza, and then ends in Genoa, where it connects with our final connector route, the Via della Costa.
This coastal route allows an Italian pilgrim to enjoy beautiful seaside towns all the way to France, connecting to the Arles route of the Camino de Santiago. Towns like Genova and San Remo are highlights. Popular resort towns and forgotten hill towns are connected by rocky climbs that would challenge even the most steadfast mountain goat offering endless stunning views of the Mediterranean for a pilgrim's efforts. So say Tara Lynn Carter and Rod Hoekstra. So there are 10 fabulous pilgrimage routes in Italy that rival anything else in the world. If you found this overview to be helpful, I hope you'll support my channel by clicking subscribe in the bottom right corner of the screen. And as they say in Italy, buon cammino.